What's up everyone? Today I've been taking a look around YouTube trying to find a good staffing rota or staffing schedule and I just can't seem to find one so I'm just going to build one today step by step in this video. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is type January at the top of the page and call the sheet January as well. We're going to make the spreadsheet look like a calendar of sorts. We're going to grab column A and what we're going to put in here is your staff or your team's names. For this demonstration, I'm just going to call it Agent 1, Agent 2, Agent 3, so on and so forth. We're going to go up to about 25 agents, but if you have less people, put in less. If you have more, put in more. You might notice throughout the process we're going to be making the spreadsheet look as good as it possibly can. For example, I'm just going to keep things centered and bordered. Next step is we're going to put the days of the month in. So we're going to grab all the cells across the top and we're just going to go from day one to day 30 in this example. We're going to evenly space them and we're going to enter in a row underneath. We're going to put in Monday and drag it all the way across. This is going to fill in automatically for you and there's your month. For Saturday and Sunday, in this example, I'm just going to highlight these days. I'm going to duplicate it all the way across. So there's going to be four per month, usually. As you can see, this clearly highlights your weekends. For example, if your team or your office only work Monday to Friday. Brilliant, so here I'm just, again, making it look as good as I possibly can as we go ahead, just by putting borders around it. For this spreadsheet, we're just going to assume everyone works in nine to five. If you want to put in the nines everywhere you can, if not, leave it blank. Here you can see some 12s and some H's. 12 you can put in if somebody's working at 12 o'clock shift to 8 for example, or H would be for holidays. So as you can see, we have what looks like a calendar now. Your agents are down on the first column and your days and your dates are going across the top. Next, we're gonna have to keep track of the staffing by keeping count of all the holiday days, sick days, late days. And for example, we're going to throw in compassionate days for this video. This is where we're going to start to use some formulas and the first formula we're going to do is count all the holidays for agent one. So in the cell under holidays, you're going to see, I'm going to type in equals count if, because we're counting if it says holidays for agent one. So equals count if, open a bracket, grab the criteria you want to count, which is the whole month for agent one. Then we're going to put H in inverted commas because that's what we're trying to count here, how many times it says H between those cells. Close the bracket and press enter. And as you can see, that's actually gonna count how many times it says H, which at the moment is going to give you zero. Next, we're gonna grab the bottom right hand corner of the cell and drag it all the way down to count the same criteria for all of the agents. And here, as you can see, I'm typing in H beside agent two and agent one, and it's counting all of their holidays as you can see in the cells. For sick days, we're going to do the exact same, equals, count if, open your bracket, grab the criteria you want to count between, inverted commas, S for sick this time, and then we're going to close the bracket again and press enter, and it's going to count exactly how many times it says S between those cells, which is zero at the moment. And again, we're going to grab the bottom right hand corner of this cell to drag it all the way down and fill in all of the criteria. So as you can see here, it's going to start counting how many times we're going to write S just to test it out. Again, for any staff that are late, we're going to count that up as well. So equals count if, open the bracket, grab the criteria you want to count between, inverted commas, L for late, close the bracket and press enter. It's going to count how many times it says L inside those cells. We can grab the bottom right hand corner of that cell and drag it down to fill in the criteria for everyone. And very same again for compassionate, same formula. Everything is the exact same. Now 
Next, we're just gonna color in all the columns, give them their own separate colors. Holidays will go for a blue, sick will go for green, late maybe a red, and compassionate maybe gray. Next, we're gonna move on to what's known as conditional formatting. So we're going to grab all of the criteria that we're going to format and we're going to go to conditional formatting and highlight cell rules. So what we're doing is we're going to highlight cells that say certain things. So any cell that says H, we're going to fill it in blue so it corresponds with our columns over there on the right. And we're going to do that a few more times here as you'll see. Again, we're going to condition the cell to highlight green this time if it says S in any of those cells that we've highlighted. So we put in S and we're going to fill it in with green. Next, for late, we're going to condition the cells again that say L in them and we're going to fill those in with a deep red. And finally, we do the same for compassionate. We've highlighted all the cells we want to condition. C for compassionate. Custom format. Gray. Brilliant, so that's all of that done. Next, we're going to test it. So we're going to put in a few H's, some S's, some L's, and some compassionates. So you're going to see that as soon as I put in the letter and press enter, it's going to highlight in that color. And because of our formulas that we've done previously, it's also going to count those on the right hand side as well. So the reason we put the colors in is just to make it more clear. So at first glance, if you want to share this rota or schedule with someone else in the company, then of course it just makes it a lot more clear. Again, just to make the spreadsheet look a bit better, we're going to merge and center January, make it bigger so it's very clear that what you're working on is January. And we're going to duplicate this spreadsheet two more times and make a February and a March. So it's literally just going in and duplicating it as you can see on screen, calling it February on top and renaming the sheet. Duplicate again, make a copy, press OK, and there you go, you have March. Change it to March there and change it to March on top. Fantastic, so you have three months. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a summary page so we can add up all of the holidays, six and late days and compassionate days into one spreadsheet. So for example, if we take January, February and March, that's a quarter of the year. So for example, a quarterly summary you might want to send around to your team. A lot of the criteria here is the same, so we're going to need to add up all the holidays, six and late and compassionate days, and we're going to be doing it for the same agents. So as you can see, I'm simply copying and pasting over the details we need. What we're going to add in over here is the amount of holidays that all the agents are entitled to. And just for this video, we're going to put in 20 days, let's say. So 20 days in the quarter or 20 days of the year, whatever you'd like yourself. And then, of course, how many holidays they have left. So we're going to have holidays, sick days, late days, compassionate days, how many they're entitled to in total and how many are left. So the next step we're going to do after adding in everyone's holiday entitlement is we're going to add up all of the holidays taken from January, February and March and add them together. Under Agent 1's holidays I'm going to put equals and go to Agent 1's holidays in January. Click on that cell, press plus, go to February. Click on that cell, press plus, go to March, click on that cell. So you've actually added up those three cells from the three different sheets. Press enter and it adds them all together. And just to test that out, we're just going to go to one of the random sheets and just put in some holidays um, for that agent.
And just make sure that on the summary page then, it's all counting up accurately, as you can see it is. Like we've done previously, we're just going to drag all of that criteria down across all of the agents, and we're also going to be able to drag it across now as well. So we drag over to Holiday Sick, Late Days and Compassionate Days. And then just give it a quick test. As you can see next we're just dragging everything down using the bottom right hand side of the cell to bring all of the formulas with it. So in order to calculate how many holidays an agent would have left, you would of course take their holidays away from their holiday entitlement. So that's the holidays they've taken away from their holiday entitlement. As you can see, very simple formula on screen and it calculates it for you. Here we're just going to test it out. Excellent. As you can see, it has affected the amount of holidays left for that agent. And what you can also do here in future years, if that agent gets more holidays or carries holidays over, you can change the holiday entitlement and the formula still stands. So it will calculate the holidays left accurately. The next part of this video is very optional. As you can see, I've selected some criteria. I've gone to insert and I've gone to insert a pivot chart. I'm going to place it on this spreadsheet and just press OK and it should appear. I'm going to turn on all of the criteria over here on the right hand side and then I'm going to align it as I see fit and just remove some buttons so it looks better. What this is, it's just a quick pivot chart to detail and give you a bar chart of how many sicks and holidays and late days and compassionate days your staff have had. So it's pretty much handy for reporting if you wanted to pop it into a report to a client or your manager, things like that. I'm just going to test it out here by putting in a lot of random sick days and holidays and you'll see how the bar chart then responds. As you can see in the summary page, all those figures would have changed. So what we need to do is refresh the pivot chart. We can do this by clicking on the pivot chart and going to analyze and then clicking refresh or we can simply right click on the pivot chart itself and press refresh too. This is actually going to put all of the criteria into the chart. As you can see, there's a lot of options with regards how the chart actually looks. And you can also change the type of chart it is. You can have bar charts like you see on screen, or you can change to line graphs or pie charts or whatever you'd like. Finally, to keep everything consistent across all of the spreadsheets, what I'm going to do is give them their respective colors. That's optional and it is purely cosmetic. So to summarize, you can now track everyone's holidays, sick days, late days and compassionate days. So if you've gotten this far in the video, thanks very much for watching. If you'd prefer to have the spreadsheet emailed to you rather than build it yourself, just put your name and your email address into a private message here on YouTube and send it to me and I'll send you back the spreadsheet. Thanks very much for watching everyone and please do subscribe. Jack it up.